Welcome back to the Wet Shane channel. Today we are here to discuss Disney Infinity and its history, from its rise to the unfortunate downfall of the series, and even some scrapped ideas as well. And this one was actually recommended to me by our good friend Angus, so thanks Angus. But before we begin today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel, I really appreciate it, thanks. Now let's dive in. The year was 2013. Skylanders and other Toys to Life games have, been the, mar have the market in a chokehold, selling extremely high amounts and profiting massively. Skylanders were dominating above all though. Disney just thought to themselves, wait, we don't have enough money. How much are we down to? Our last two billion. Holy shit, it's never been that low. Get the team together, we need to hop on this Toys to Life trend. So then Disney began to brainstorm ideas and began to look at their past games. Then they saw it. In their Toy Story 3 movie tie-in game, they had a mode called the Toy Box, and it was really well received for that specific mode. So they started putting the pieces together, and on August 18th, 2013, Disney Infinity was released to the world, and it was basically just that Toys to Life mode as an entire game. The game was received as a meh kind of game. You're probably wondering why. Well, let's see. The game's whole marketing strategy was how customizable it was, and to have your imagination flourish through the game. Although it was quite limiting in the department where you have to buy these, in the department where you have to buy these toy box worlds to really experience the game. But the thing about this was you also had to have the respective character of that while playing. This led to not many options when playing, as you could say the incredible uh, play. The, you could say the Incredibles. Toy box, but you have to play as Mr. Incredible. Or what if you want to play Monsters University Toy Box? Well, better have fun with Sully. But because you don't know how many figures, because you don't want to know how many figures there were on launch. Three. Yes, I'm not joking. Mr. Incredible, Sully, and Jack Sparrow. One way to play every single time. You either play Monsters University with Sully, the Incredibles World with Mr. Incredible. Or the parts of the Caribbean world with Jack Sparrow. And one more thing, this game is targeted to kids, right? What's one thing most kids have? Siblings. And you can't play any toy boxes with player two, as there's only three figures on launch. Then you better be an only child if you want to play this game. Thankfully, after a month or so, they released new figures, adding more than one of each franchise, so you can play multiplayer and adding more toy boxes like Toy Story, Cars, Wreck It Ralph, and Frozen. And Phineas and Ferb. But finally, the game was thriving. But there's still no cross world play, which was a huge problem from the start. And we were missing some key characters in this. Like, there needs to be Aladdin, Snow White, even Mickey himself. Mickey is literally the face of Disney, and he isn't here. And no, I did not count this Fantasia Mickey in, Wick one, in Wave 1. He's not the real Mickey. Overall, Disney Infinity 1.0 was an alright game but it still needed lots of fixes to become what it really could do. So, what's the most logical step to make it a whole new game? <sighs> Disney Infinity wasn't really meeting up to Disney's standards, so they decided to retry it and make a newer version, simply named Disney Infinity 2.0. I know, it's such a creative name, right? It's not confusing at all, right? Disney Infinity 2.0 released to the public on the 18th of September and it set out to make the playing experience far better than its predecessor. The entire story mode in the game is centered around Marvel. There's also another problem with this. It's kind of hard to tell what's compatible with Disney, one, Disney Infinity 1.0 as the figures look virtually the same as 2.0's figures. So when you buy a figure excited to use it then boom it's not compatible. Although, this image, uh, this issue is not huge, so you can just return the figure, it's no big deal. But this actually was a sizable improvement from the first game. Although, it seems to always have a, they always seem to have great improvements, but it always seems to have a catch. Having more characters is good, but original Disney characters get lost in the cracks. They made lots of new ways to play in the sandbox, but you need those, you need respective characters to use those things. All in all, this game is far better than the original, but still needed some tweaking to improve. So now surely they take a step back and start rolling out a new game. Again. 
Yes, here we go again. On the 28th of August 2015, Disney tried again at this Toys to Life type game, and hey, I think they finally hit the nail on the coffin and perfected their game. For starters, they've included a lot more diverse characters in the Disney in the Disney game. And yeah, three years later, they finally get Mickey Mouse. I, I'm surprised that it took this long. Then there's more things like Star Wars beginning off the launch of the game, which was re received quite well, which already hooked people in. But finally, our prayers were answered. They added cross-character progression and playability in Playbox Worlds. And that helped the game a ton. That and selling more figures, selling more people, huh? more everything. The game was really thriving now. But... We also got some other... We, but we also got some other cool things. Like... Better combat, cooler sandbox places, it's all great. The series was finally in a great place to build and expand, and it really seemed like the sky truly was the limit with this series, and they could take it as far as they wanted. Well, only, well if only that happened, because uh, in 2017 the series ended, and we all shed a single tear for the series, as it slowly fell into obscurity over the past few years. There's been proof that Disney was working on a 4.0 though, with scrap figures such as Gwen Stacy, Peter Pan, and most importantly, Dolphin Schmerz. All characters were planned for the next game, but unfortunately, it really wasn't meant to be. So, everything was scrapped in 4.0. They had a lot of things coming up to be in 4.0, and it was really seeming like it was going to be an amazing game. <sighs> we'll never know. We are now at the end of the video. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe. And thank you to Angus for suggesting this video to me. I'll catch you all next time. Goodbye.